addressing the media briefing which traditionally follows the President's State of the Nation address. Minister of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Lichisa Tsenudi, spoke about new regulations intended to introduce more professionalism into municipalities. Let's talk about professionalizing. It's not, uh, we shouldn't assume that it didn't exist before. It has always existed. The problem is the law, as they say, uh, uh, lawyers like uh, Deputy Minister Nell, is an ass. It creates problems. There are always ways people found around it so we have we had to tighten it so that it enabled us to uh, to 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 ensure that truly competent people are employed this is why the regulations that go with that amendment uh, came later uh, recently uh, to ensure that uh, we clarify what we mean by the requirements for professional competencies of these municipalities firstly but secondly also that they are screened uh, so that wherever they come from, they do not bring their baggages there. Um, what we are not saying there, which I want to state, is that we are also in consultation, uh, al already have had uh, bilateral discussions with higher education. We are working together with them and the uh, Department of Public Administration, uh, uh, Honorable Sisulu, as department, um, in the in in the establishment of a school of local government the school of government as a whole but we are focusing on on, on local government uh, so that uh, right now uh, initiatives are underway to coordinate better those capacity building skills for for uh, both technical and professional skills at local government level so uh, that work is underway as we speak it constitute part of this professionalizing work that we are doing that we are doing here. We are also offering opportunities for young professionals coming out of universities and colleges uh, to be uh, working with engineering uh, uh, institutions and schools uh, so that the, the availability of these skills is there. Uh, they are, uh, and this is in addition to creating an environment inside these municipalities for professionals to stay, uh, those who are there. And those who are outside must feel this is a place to want to go to. So it is those conditions <laughs> that uh, we know will ensure that we get professionals and those that we do have are able to stay longer. A report that uh, Salga did, for example, identified that chief financial officers, um, uh, as an example, um, uh, not many of them had been in any one municipality for more than two years. Uh, and those that were, for example, appointed in smaller municipalities were, were quickly poached by bigger municipalities. So there was a constant movement of these professionals and it created a problem. So those things are some of the things that we are talking about dealing with. So in the quality of induction, in the quality of training, which we say the school of government will contribute to, uh, we, we, are, we think that we will contribute a big way. Salga has conducted a skills audit and um, uh, in municipalities, uh, we've been working together around those things. What we will do as part of the, as part of the, uh, the School of Government initiative, our work with the local government CETA, uh, they too have, have done uh, uh, audits uh, which we can talk to. Uh, we will create a special opportunity for us to provide the results of these surveys and, and audits so that you see how we link them uh, to, to the intervention we are making. Just to give you an example, you see, when a local government CETA says each municipality must provide a work skills uh, plan, uh, like uh, this year, uh, they must do it by April, unlike in the past, it used to be by June. Now, the, the, this, what this work workplace skills plan does it provide data of uh, the skills inside a municipality and then they draw plans on the training and capacity building initiatives for the variety of people in the municipality uh, to leave them from where they are upwards uh, I, I said when i started that the requirements for professional competencies have always been there at, at municipal level what is happening is that the abuse that have taken place in the system is the one that uh, forced us to to tighten up the regulations to support the legislation that we have in place and so uh, and they happen as part of the local government turnaround strategy 
uh, they are a continuation of the uh, amendment of the Municipal Systems Act, and the regulation had to come back. Now, the regulations had to be negotiated with the trade union movement, SAMU and IMATU, uh, negotiated with SALGA itself uh, as an employer in that area, uh, but also uh, touch base with Treasury and other departments uh, whose uh, some of these professionals uh, come from will be affected by such uh, 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 regulations. And we needed to do that consultation. We've agreed with Treasury that, um, uh, for example, in the area of financial management, uh, we are giving people 18 months or 12 months, 18 months, 18 months, uh, uh, to acquire some of these qualifications. Because, you see, some of them do have postgraduate qualifications, but not uh, with the qualifications that are expected they should have. So we're giving them 18 months to acquire those specificities of, of skill acquisition. And those who will not have it by then, post 18 months, uh, their employment is, is no longer appropriate, it's irregular, they must look for a job. If you imply a post that period, you will not be uh, employed if you do not have those qualifications. Uh, unfortunately, law cannot be imp implemented uh, retrospectively. So people are given an opportunity to acquire those skills, and if they don't have them by the appropriate timing, they will have to leave the employment. Other people must be employed with the appropriate uh, qualifications.